Hey Anadorks, quick programming note here before we get started. This is our last book episode of season one. After this, we'll do our big ending episode where we talk about the first seven books as a whole. And um, after that, we're going to take a few weeks off to collect ourselves, generate more content and catch up with some other exciting developments, such as like getting the Patreon together and things like that. So during February, we might have fewer episodes, might do a fewer cuter mini-sodes, um, but we'll be back rip roaring in March with all the biggest Animorph content you've come to know and love. That's it. That's all I got. Enjoy the end of book seven. These may be kids' books, but we discuss dark themes and mature content. There may also be some explicit language. Listener discretion is advised. How do we start an episode? Um, um, by asking that question. When we last left our gang. <laughs> when we last left our heroes. Well, I feel like... You know, if there was only some way we could jump to the future and see how this episode already ended. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I will okay. show you what you need to uh, understand. To understand. <laughs> yeah. And maybe it's just the way we broke it up. I don't think we've ever had better cliffhangers than this book. I know. That's true. I wrote a better book this time. Yes. Yeah. The hardest thing people don't get this about this podcast is I have to write these books <laughs> so that we can read them. Shall we get to it? Yes. I couldn't believe how this section picked up. I thought we were still going to have a little bit of build up, but no. Where we cut off, we jump right in. That's oh, right. Yeah. We're here. Yeah. I will show you what you need to understand. And suddenly, whoosh, we are not yeah. in the barn. We are in a scruffy looking field, which to me felt a little hurtful. Okay. Yeah. You know, just you don't need to make judgments about the grass. It's doing like its that. best. It's doing its best. <laughs> so here's a word choice. There's it, there, It's not just a field. There's a building nearby. And it's a low, long, tumble down building. I did not what know. What is a tumble down I, I, building? Yeah. like yeah. yeah. Tumble down. I literally misread this four times. <laughs> is this a real word? I've never heard it. I looked it up. I, I kept imagining a tumbleweed blowing past, which is <laughs> yeah. not incorrect, yeah. but it's like a, in disrepair, a building that's like collapsing, kind of like the shaft okay. that Jake was yurked in. Uh, okay, okay. Okay. Thanks for giving an example that helps. <laughs> <Yeah>. um, <laughs> Why tumble down? Of, Just say it's in disrepair. Uh, but it's it's a um, adjective, right? Yeah, yeah. But it's not like All a right. style of building. Yeah. Like I wouldn't have I wouldn't have like a nice little tumble down cottage <laughs> where I live. No. Right. Like I retired to a tumble down college in the Catskills yeah. or something like it that. It does kind of sound cute though. A tumble down cottage. It does. It, does. it sounds a like a little something tumble down cottage. Airbnb. Yeah. yeah. Oh, a little a little tumble down. <laughs> What about, a, what about an open air B and B? An open air B and B. That's really good. Ah, uh, uh, the Elemist, who we hadn't seen before, <laughs> but we had heard before. <laughs> Remains said, nowhere I will to show be seen. You. <laughs> yes. <laughs> At the end of last episode, we merely heard his voice again, and he said, "I will show you what you need to understand." And we still can't see him. Yeah. We, I mean, I guess it, then, I, I we, guess it logically follows that if someone says that to you, you would imagine if they're going to transport you, it would be to somewhere that they are. Uh, but he is not. And we know his lovely little light bulb everywhere. face is not making He's an everywhere. appearance. That's right. That's right. He is here. We were the only people around. Five humans, one Andalite, five real humans. Big reveal. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Yes, because Tobias, like, Tobias has is also his body here again. again. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And he's over it. He's like fucking jaded on mm -hmm. this. He's like, oh, this routine again. Uh, yeah. Uh, something about being a burb like makes you really unimpressed about. Well, all he was really upset about being used as a pawn, being turned into yeah. a human last time to like make his friends feel guilty. So no, I remember that, too. I'm just saying, like, could you look a little impressed? Like, you know? <laughs> could you be like, happy you can hold hands 
the yeah. lewdest of acts. Why don't yeah? Why don't you just grab everybody's hams hams? <laughs> why don't you grab? <laughs> why don't you just grab their hams just right grab now? Grab by the ham. <laughs> so they've uh, they've been transported. We get a a catalog of reactions to this, which I like. Jake looks angry. Cassie marvels. Marco does not. What was it? Grin sardonically. Smi- he grins smirks sardonically. Not, not he smirks nonchalantly. Yeah. Yes. Um, Rubbing it like, in. He's like. He's like. He's like. Ha. But he's not succeeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. He's we like, oh. we feel the chalance. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. We get it. You're nonchalant. And Axe skitters nervously on his dainty hooves and stretched dainty. his tail as if preparing to use it. So he, like oh. Mr. Three, has dainty hooves. Do all and the yes. lights have? I think that is a conclusion that we are being led toward. Yes. I mean, I would have to go back into the text and see what they how they described Elfengor's hooves. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. I, I, you know... Yeah, what does it say in the Old Testament? What does it say in the Talmud? <laughs> there's, yeah, there's a lot of daintiness in the New Testament, but yeah. the Old Testament got... Uh, the Old Testament Andalites are real, you know, like... Uh, like real, uh, real Andalites Andalites, <laughs> yeah. you know? Yes. Which is definitely uh, a big Fire and brimstone, that's yes. what I'm looking yeah. for. Fire and brimstone. <laughs> they don't make them like they used to. <laughs> no, they sure don't. I thought maybe the daintiness came with uh, the yerk. The yerk made them dainty. But, uh... <laughs> this just in, yerks are making you gay. Like... <laughs> <laughs> That's El Fangor, oh, definitely. No. Oh my God. That's why they're at war. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, it's the gay agenda. Oh my they're God. They're making our hooves dainty. <laughs> <laughs> I can't handle that. Yeah. I, like, oh. I can't, I like, I need to sit down and I'm already sitting. <laughs> they quickly put together that something's not right about where they are like there's they recognize yeah. it but they also don't recognize it the sky's weird i think it's green right and um, yeah it's, it's got yellow. like weird yellow. colors it's yellow. yeah it's got yellowish yeah. tint and yeah, i think they it's... say there's some parts that look green and it's just overall strange yes and the trees are dying they really want us to know yes. the trees are dying well that was uh, very important yeah. to cassie yes. and so they yeah. start to like head toward the tumble down the... building <laughs> they identify that the tumble down building is a school is yes. their school yes. and they also talk they make all the the necessary jokes of like i should feel happy but all i feel is confused and listless and sad that's right cassie is starting to pick up that it's not about where they are it's about when they are yes that's right it starts off as a very tenuous link and then we get some like hard facts about it because that line about the trees behind the gym dying that eddie alluded to is like about cassie understanding that they're the same trees but a lot have of time has passed. Yeah. And they haven't so, been being cared like, for, yeah. And so X chimes in, there is a time distortion. I can sense it, but I don't know what it means. And I'm curious about that because for some reason I thought his perfect time sense was the same as my Casio calculator watch. <laughs> like I assumed that he just had a watch mm. and that any <laughs> <laughs> an internal um, <laughs> watch. Yeah, an internal watch, but like uh, it's technological that it's yeah. like you know just a watch. Yeah. It's no, a, I think it's I yeah. think it's genetic. Like it's a biological thing that they seem to have that he seems. To I have. mean, a biological Almost clock like a is the same. Yeah. You know yeah, that exactly. they tick yeah. just as fast. Well, yeah, except that <laughs> my perceptual clock changes based upon how little coffee I've had. So um, I wondered. I took this a different way. I thought maybe he had traveled through time before, and that's what he was sensing which would be interesting I, too i mean i don't want to give the books that's that not problem that's to not solve. what my sense of it is because he doesn't understand it i feel like if he'd traveled mm. in time before he'd be like oh we time traveled yeah. but instead he's like something is wrong like the i'm counting minutes in my head what's happening is your, he yeah. is aware of time passing more consciously than we are uh, and yeah. so something something between the minute when they were in the barn and the minute when they were in the field, even though it changed in yes. an instant, he got a totally. sense that they were not consecutive minutes, yes. like that we have moved out of order. Yes. But I, I and I guess the thing I was thinking is just that he he is the only one there who would have the language of time distortion. Right. Like, yeah. I don't think that any of the kids would have like so he knows that that, that something that's possible maybe or maybe he's just describing what he's feeling i feel like he looked down 
in himself and was like, <laughs> my little time dangler. I don't know what That's it is. What it's it's probably like a little a flinger. It's probably a flinger. A little, was it a flanger? A, fla- a, a fleer. Fleer. <laughs> fleer. Yeah, he's he's got an extra fleer in one of his appendixes that just ticks back and forth at a regular interval. Yeah, yeah. And he can check that. And his fleer got like upset. I'm just, what's the punching and, bag uh, called in your throat? Like uh, uvula. Uvula. Yeah. That's what I'm imagining when you're talking about. A- I've never heard anybody call it the punching really? bag in your throat. I but- feel like uh, <laughs> that's maybe what- it's like a rhythm bag. Yeah, <laughs> I thought that was what you called it if you didn't know what it was. Uh, <laughs> 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 Cassie names it. Cassie says it's the future. She does seem very confident. And Rachel seems to feel that that's true. Like she yeah. she wants to think it's not, but there is some level of her sensing that it's true. And I wonder if the Elemist is like trying to give them those vibes yeah like if he's sending vibes yeah he he seems to be he seems to be controlling the mood a lot yeah we'll come back to that yeah Yeah. Yeah. that that's a whole vibe and feeling about like maybe that's been going on longer than we yeah but we have our five six now normal mall rats here and so what do they want to (laughs) do They're, I don't know that I'd go with normal mall rats for all six of yes, them, that's but true. yeah, okay. Burgeoning mall rat. Mm-hmm. more of a mall deer. Yeah. yeah. I would say I would say that the mall deer is actually a mall expert. Yeah. I would say that the mall deer is the most proficient. At He's going to tell us all about how much he loves malls in a little bit here. Yes. Yeah. We just need to get him to try Sparrow, the pizza that was always there. Sparrow. Yeah. Sparrow. <laughs> yes. They walk up to the school through the scruffy field. <laughs> So they peek into a window and then they look morbidly through the blast holes. <laughs> really? Yeah. We, is that what it we says? We school that and is look morbidly through the blast holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my One God. person's blast hole is another person's window. It's another person's window. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm a renter. Beggars can't be choosers. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Every year I winterize my blast holes. <laughs> <laughs> the taxons love blast holes. Oh, they love <laughs> it. Will come so Marco, Marco, also my favorite Pokemon. <laughs> Marco, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> I just got, got the blast reaction. holes. Yeah, they look morbidly in through the blast holes, and Marco yeah. screams because there's a skeleton <laughs> lying crumpled on a desk <laughs> in a classroom. This was so funny to me. Every child's fantasy. But then also it's like, what if it's the science room? Well, don't get ahead of yourselves. You're thinking it's reasonable, but nope, this is history class. This is Paloma's (laughs) classroom. Yes, Paloma. (laughs) Paloma here, later Ms. Paloma. I just imagine an apple on the desk. It feels like so... um, (laughs) Boy Meets World, like the Halloween episode of Boy Meets World. Oh, where they're like locked in the school yes. and they do a scream thing. Yeah. 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 Well, we all have known for a long time that Chapman's been extremely dedicated to Halloween decorations. So it's really not that strange. In fact, mm-hmm. when we looked back into it, that's actually why those neighbors move. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It had nothing to do with the Yerks. It had to do with they couldn't keep up with the Chapmans. Yeah. <laughs> no one can keep up with the Chapmans. I love Paloma because she was introduced by name because she comes back again. <laughs> yeah, it's one of the first time that happens yeah. because usually when we get a random name introduction, it is not going to come up again. It's not well, going to come up again. We're never going to see these people again. I've started telling people IRL, they'll be like, hi, my name's Alex. And I'll be like, I'm never going to see you yeah. again. Phantom Warps <laughs> has taught me anything. Yeah. You're you're nobody. Yeah. You didn't make a big show that you can't tell me your last name. That <laughs> like, so yeah, no. Yeah. She's getting last named. She's definitely not gonna join the animorphs. Right. <laughs> like, what if the reason Paloma turns into a skeleton is because they name her by last name here? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're they're searching back through the archives of their thoughts and they're like, We must get Paloma. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we don't actually know that it's Paloma. They say they're not sure. Whose skeleton it is. Oh, but is. come on. Who could mistake her angry figure? No, maybe they know because everybody knows that she has artificial knees or something. I don't know. But I think it could be like just a kid who didn't get killed in the explosion and, you know, didn't get the message that he wasn't supposed to keep coming to school. And he keeps showing up every day. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. It's like Arnold in Magic School Bus, that yeah, episode where like, they go into his body. And yeah, he's like... like and- er- He's like, gonna where come is back everybody? tomorrow. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So they t- they see the skeleton, and Rachel starts to theorize 
about why the Elamist has them here. So she says, it's a little lesson. Mm-hmm. The Elamist is showing us what happens in the future. How cute, how right. clever, but how do we know this is really the future and not just some little show? Yeah, and I think she's got a reason to feel that way. Like, clearly, he's been making it clear that he wants them to understand. But it does seem a little weird that right when they're about to give up, he shows them, mm-hmm. like, their ultimate destruction. But Jake says, Jake says, you know... Let's try them all, okay? Right, right. Let's just, we should go to the mall. We should go to the mall. Yeah. But I think that that is a really, I want to point out that we were calling that out in the first episode of this book as like, they were not put in a position to make a choice. Second episode. Yes. Even- so anyway, Marco Marco pitches, you know, the classic Back to the Future 2 plot of finding a world almanac and finding out who wins all the sports things. Also, also the, the plot of Primer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and Rachel has a very normal reaction to this. She forces a laugh that comes out like a grunt. <laughs> <laughs> Eddie, we need to hear what yours sounds like, my friend. <laughs> You do you do laugh like that sometimes. No, I do not. So yes, Rachel Forrest laughs that comes out like a grunt. It's a wild detail. <laughs> I don't understand why it's here. You could it's just say she forced development. The laugh. We walk past an eight-lane highway, which I think is further evidence that they're in California. Because I just don't know mm. that many places that have eight-lane highways. Yeah, they'd have to be in like DC, and we already know they're not there. They, yeah. Like, there's not a single car, no trucks. They do see a rusted out wreck of a car with another skeleton gripping its steering wheel. Yeah, but that's but- just L.A. <laughs> that's like, that's just, that's how L.A. is, you know? Nobody knows you now. It can't be L.A., though, right? Like, they've specifically said town and you would never call L.A. a town. That's true. Rachel makes a comment about wishing that they had to buy his Hawkeyes because they're trying to see something in the distance. And what they see is just like a long glass tube to which yes. Axe says it is a conveyance of some kind, which I just like. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like it's yeah, a good line. Yeah. He just wants to be understood by the others. <laughs> uh, yeah, he and compares so them to train. I guess I do spoil him. <laughs> <laughs> I have that thought too, yeah. But he's my only, only means, means of conveyance. conveyance. <laughs> so it's, a, it's like a big train, only faster. <laughs> they go like... 300 or more miles per of hour. Your miles. Our miles. Um, yeah. yeah. And Marco and Axe have a cute little flirty tiff where he's like, they're everyone's miles. And Axe is like, ah, 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 I know about the metric system. Some of you people use kilometers. Yes. More people, actually. <laughs> so this whole world has been being built up as very dystopian and depressing. Like, nobody's happy about their teacher being dead or the school being destroyed. Nobody's happy about any of this. And one of the things that they add to the list is that there's working fucking public transit. Yeah, How much of a fucking bummer is that? Yeah. How terrible would that be? This is the future Republicans believe will happen if we introduce high-speed rail, yes, okay? This yeah. is what they believe. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm not seeing a downside. A yerk for every year <laughs> and a train that, that moves really quickly? That sounds great. <laughs> It's not as catchy a slogan, but, you know, it works. I think for this list of problems that, like, this dystopic world that we're in, the kids are taking it very well. Like, they've... Well, that's because they're all fucking Dems, Ed. (laughs) Like, that's... It's it's like... it's This is what they want. They want... This is what we knew socialism would bring. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I love that they go to Sears and it's just be- Sears. Uh, Sears. <laughs> That's right, because we've made it to the mall now. The mall is still standing. The Sears sign is still standing, but these weird, these weird, like six foot diameter holes. Not blast holes. <laughs> Not, Not blast, blast holes. holes. Drill My holes. My favorite Pokemon. Drill Sorry, holes. Sorry, I just want to hit that joke again because. <laughs> <laughs> So there's these big assholes. There's like a bunch of big them in assholes? JCPenney. Drill hole, <laughs> asshole, whatever you want to call it. Yes. And so I, we're supposed to kind of think of the taxons as termites, right? Like that's uh, yeah. all, all of this um, talk of tubes and then these holes that the the taxons are crawling through makes me want to imagine them as gerbils with like the the gerbil tubes that connect uh, from. Oh yeah. But, oh my God. A little yerk in a ball. Just <laughs> running around. Oh, if he's so cute wearing its little hat. Yeah. Wait, no, those are taxons. Sorry. Those are taxons. They'd yeah. still be pretty cute. The yerks wear, what do we call them? 
uh, shrouds when they're um, on the council. Yes. So yes, taxons are crawling out of these holes and slithering up to the roof and down to the ground. I don't get the slither. The choice of slither is a verb, and we get it a couple times in this section, and we've gotten it a lot of times. They have legs. So like, I don't quite get the Slytherin thing. Like, I thought like, they I, had. I thought they had like, m- like you know, microscopic legs. Essentially, like maybe. they centipede have like. Legs. Worn, well, but, but I would never describe like, a centipede as slithering. No. Oh, I. It a would millipede, be a maybe though. A millipede. It would be maybe. a stretch, but I, I could, I could hardly see it. But this, these books hate bugs. That's what we yeah. really should take from this because they even compare it. Cassie is looking at it at the uh, what is it? The J.C. Penny, the Sears that has all the holes in uh-huh. it. And uh-huh. she says it's a hive. It's like a beehive or an ant colony, which of course yep. makes some bells for us. Which wild choice, Ka, putting that in all caps, like <laughs> wild choice. <laughs> wild for legal choice. reasons, I do have to specify that Chris is joking. No, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they're just carrying out boxes for some reason. We don't really find out what they're doing. They're like unloading a, a spacecraft. Yeah. Yeah, and carrying the boxes back into the mall. I don't know. I guess they're restocking. Silvery packages because it wasn't futuristic <laughs> enough. Because it's from uh, space. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, uh, this is this is when it's fully cemented to them that they this is the future, the way it will seem when the Animorphs lose and the Yerks win and take over. But honestly, the mall's still open, so what the <laughs> fuck are they complaining about? If anything, there's it's easier access to get into the mall. Like, there's more blast holes I can enter through. <laughs> and Spencer's is still open. Yeah. <laughs> Spencer's still running. Yeah. They could not get I, a Yerk to work because actually God, the wh- only un human on the planet <laughs> yeah. is inside that Spencer. Yeah. No if Spencer's I, if controllers. If I order fuzzy handcuffs online, nobody <laughs> can run into me at the store and see me ordering them. <laughs> you know, there's no, there's no, there's no chance for scandal. That's why Visser 3 took over. He wanted yes. to take over yes. He didn't want anyone yes. to know. Yes. They hadn't invented discreet packaging yet in the 90s no. and he was really upset about it. <laughs> yeah, but he knew that that's what the Dems wanted. <laughs> 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 so they see a they see a drop shaft leading up from the mall to this high speed transit system. Yeah, and, and now we're gonna. I just want to point out, like we've already talked about what this is, <laughs> and we're gonna talk about it some fucking more because it's really unfathomable that in some city in America there be mass transit. <laughs> yeah. Like they have to fall back on a description of the monorail at Disney World <laughs> so that people will know what the fuck they're talking about. <laughs> They see people going, well, they see taxons going up there and they're like, oh, my God, they're just going to think we're human controllers. We can do whatever we want and just pretend to be human controllers. And Tobias is like, yeah, the Elemis probably didn't send us here to get us killed. So there's probably a way for us to survive this. (laughs) And they're like, hope not. (laughs) Guess this is the point. Axe has been walking around in this Andalite form this entire time. And the taxons never noticed that there were. Well, I think I like to think they're like up on a hill nearby, like watching because they say an light on a hill. I mean, I guess maybe. Taxons well, taxons don't have, don't have great eyes. Yeah. yeah. Is that true? They don't talk about taxon eyes very often. Just red jello things. Beautiful, beautiful eyes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> beautiful, but so short sighted. <laughs> Fatal flaw. Axe realizes that, yes, he will be in danger in. Andalite form, so he decides to more slowly melt to a human. Yes, he slowly <laughs> melts because he wants to pretend to be a human controller because the only Andalite they would have seen is Visser 3. And Marco's like, maybe the Yerks beat the Andalites too. And Axe is like, absolutely fucking not. Yeah. Don't you ever. <laughs> so Axe killed Marco. Yeah. And- <laughs> Marco makes another train reference. Yeah. He's like, oh, we're going to climb aboard the Yerk version of Amtrak. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What is so unfathomable <laughs> about this? <laughs> but it's like, yes, you're getting on a fucking train. Just it's do it. It's not that dude. weird. It's not weird at all. Axe takes this moment to reminisce about malls and their <laughs> wonderful food. Um, yes. Um, yeah. Cinnamon buns, buns, buns. Uh, and he loves chocolate, too. Oh, yeah. Gotta love mm-hmm. chocolate. Forgot about Starbucks. They had a whole court for food. At the mall, you know, not a lot of people take it that seriously. That's true. That's where I tried to get um my case moved to the food court. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what's the technical term for that? It's a uh, venue change, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I, yeah, I, yeah. I filed a venue change, motion a venue, venue change. change to the food court. <laughs> 
Mm. Couldn't get a fair trial on the tennis court. Exactly. You better leave that joke in. <laughs> There's one taxon. What's the verb we were talking about? Was it slithered? Slither, yeah. yeah. One taxon that slithers past, like rushing like um, a commuter trying to get to work. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Miranda, you described it in a really <laughs> funny way. Yeah, I was like, he had a little tie in a briefcase, perched atop his head a drillby hat. If he didn't get these reports to his boss's desk by the end of the day, he'd be fed to the rest of the company. (laughs) Honestly, like, yeah, can we just pivot to, like, existing in this world? It's more interesting. Like, I don't know. They have transit. This guy's wearing a tie. I think it's adorable. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Texans are way cuter than they get credit for. It's true. Like, yes. But I feel like they keep comparing what the Yerks have built here to like people commuting to work. I feel like that comes up yeah. over and over again. Like There's like own- a very childlike vision of bureaucracy yes, going yeah. on here. Yeah. It's like when the Yerks win, they'll all have jobs. And yeah, I'm like, right. why would they again. all why would they all have jobs? They won. Like- yeah. yeah. It's like it's not, it sounds fine. Yeah. It just sounds fine. Like and also they're like how rude that he was trying to get to work on time. It's like fuck you, your kids without a job. Yeah. yeah. Like I mean except for the like- scorched earth. That part sucks. That's everything. rough, yeah. What's the problem with a little scorched earth? When a volcano <laughs> does it, it's fine. I bet you the coral reefs are thriving. <laughs> yeah, without us, yeah, you're probably yeah. right. Yeah. Yerks yeah. don't use fossil fuels. Right. Although the Yerks probably just looked at the coral reef and were like, bleach them all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is where we finally get into, I want to say Center City, but they keep calling it a town, but we go into... It's not Philadelphia. It's Please downtown. Please stop yeah. equating yeah. their town to Philadelphia. I'm <laughs> so tired of you Is Philly this. the only one with the Center City? They talk about the train. It's not like enclosed. And then there's this open area at the back where all the taxons go to just stand. And then there's this front area that has these <laughs> larger steel chairs that are not padded at all because hork don't need padding, I guess. Also, they would just shred it, you know, with their True. blades yeah. on every limb. Rude. But there's m- way more seats for humans than hork and taxons, like, combined. There's room for, like, five taxons and, like, five hork and, like, 20 humans. So they're like, okay, human controllers are the norm so we're gonna we're gonna blend right in. It's gonna be fine. Importantly, also I think there's a uh, yerk pool now on top of the roof of the mall. That is important. I think it like because we're about to talk about another yerk pool, so it's good to distinguish. I'm actually very impressed with the kids picking up on external clues like that. Like, yeah, no, they do a good job keeping an eye out and keeping keeping, keeping an eye out <laughs> and uh, keeping an eye. They out? also I love that. They also like notice things that I don't know if I really would have noticed at like 11 or 12. For instance, they notice that the train is going from zero to its max speed really quickly, but there's no like lurching of inertia. Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting. No Mm -hmm. G-forces. Here's the thing. All that energy has to go somewhere. Go so straight like, to the taxon at the back. He's just having a wild ride. <laughs> Tell me if this is something, though, that an 11-year-old would say, we just blew along at a speed that boggled the mind. <laughs> I love it. Honestly, Sounds like something my dad much would I, say. Yeah. yeah, do you remember how much I said the word phenomenal when we were 11? So they get off the train. Yes. They're impressed by it. They like trains. They're used to buses. It takes a half hour to get from the suburban mall to downtown, usually. But they made the trip in about a minute and a half, and they're won over by it. Yeah, no, they they definitely, this is a positive. Wait, what do you, wait, what do you mean they're won over by it? Oh, Marco says fast. Yeah, and then Rachel says beats the bus. And Rachel says it beats the bus. Yeah, okay, good. And they specifically, if I remember correctly, they said... It's it's like SEPTA, but a little bit nicer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, they do say that, but they don't want to say too much or they'll give away. Cause they can't give away tell where, you they where they are. They yeah, are. right. So downtown in uh, downtown, <laughs> we're, downtown. There are skyscrapers in this town. Well, no, they're yeah. not mm-hmm. anymore, but they're well, gone. Yeah, the- <laughs> <laughs> entire skyscrapers were simply gone. And others now had wormholes for the taxons. I love you know, this. I knew they were called wormholes for a reason. Yeah. They don't mean like a portal for a portal. <laughs> you right? don't know they're that. They're talking No, they're just talking about a It damn takes you hole. from inside it's to outside. Feature, That's pretty Chris. impressive. Can you do that? I can do that so e- <laughs> my apartment building has one of those, dude. And that's when this is the first time we see the eggs tower. Yes. Yes, or the EGS <laughs> tower. <laughs> 
Well, okay, so hold on. Like, <laughs> like, is it the Eggs Tower or the EGS? Because it's all caps. It's I'm definitely calling... the EGS Tower. Okay, cool. <laughs> but I've been Why? calling it the Eggs Tower in my what brain. What the hell is this tower? It's the tallest building in town. It's 60 <laughs> stories tall. It still stood almost intact. Oh, Epic Games Studio. Oh, or, it's Epic yeah, Games. It's Epic Games. It's that Fortnite, you guys. Sense. I'm flossing right now. Can you hear me flossing? Oh, do you know what comes up in Sacramento? The Eggs Tower. Sacramento? It's real? It seems... So they're like, we can't tell you where we live, but the tallest building in our town is in Sacramento. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> the Eggs Tower, two eggs poached and stacked over Canadian bacon and fresh tomato. <laughs> <laughs> Point is, it's a tower that has never been mentioned. The EGS tower, the top two floors, for some reason, had been sheared away, then covered with a glass dome. Pale sunlight sparkled off the dome. It was almost like a beacon. Then we move on. Okay. Yeah, no yeah. point No point in paying attention to There's that. There's some it's people fine. there, but not a lot. They see some humans in hork walking around, but not a lot of people. Way fewer than it, there should be for a city of this size. And then they see where the city arena should be, a place they have happy memories. They saw the circus there earlier this uh-huh. book. We all remember Miranda. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is, you know, they shouldn't be too shocked about that because, like, they used to flood the Coliseum and have naval battles in there. <laughs> so it's not that impressive yes, that they turned because, it into a gigantic York pool. <laughs> right. The city arena, there was another department store right near it, a building that apparently used to have tall antennae on top. He uses the wrong plural of antenna. That's okay. He's 11. It's weird that he stopped to spell it out loud. Anyway, <laughs> in their place was a yerk pool, a pool of shocking size. It was a small lake, really. I love this. You could have ridden around. <laughs> you could have ridden around on it in a motorboat and not looked out of place. I don't think that's and true. And then, like, <laughs> based on like size alone, but like. <laughs> Like, if you have a jet ski in a yerk pool, somebody's <laughs> going to be upset. I'm just yeah. saying. Like, that's good. And then we get the size of this artificial lake. It was three times as wide <laughs> as a football <laughs> as a football field is long. Maybe. Maybe. Four, maybe times, four, times. four times as wide. Which <laughs> are two like, very different numbers. But, you know. But, like, okay. why, why express width? <laughs> like why why talk about width why couldn't it be that long like well, why, but also why like width? the other thing is that just that like everybody knows how long a football field is right it's like famously it's 100 yards 100 yards so like why it's like yeah three times as long as a football field it takes longer to say that than it takes to say 300 yards right and it while just- you're running the math trying to visualize it then they say maybe four it's like right it's like (laughs) while you weren't paying attention we made it longer so we see cages around the yerk pool here which draws a note we didn't mention earlier the yerk pool we saw earlier was for taxons only it seemed because they didn't even have cages taxons were just hanging out because all taxons Ah, are voluntary controllers Mm -hmm. but this one is different we've got hork bajir and humans in these cages but they don't They don't scream out for help like they did in book one. They just cry. Yeah. Or stare stare blankly into space. Space, space, fuck me. And the book (laughs) says, fuck Miranda. No, I'm just kidding. The book (laughs) says they knew there was no help coming. They knew that Hope, whoever she was, was dead. (laughs) Which I wondered if Hope was that taxon that we saw going off to work. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Got smashed under a train. Yeah. (laughs) While they're taking this all in and and thinking about how big a football field is, they are standing in the middle of rush hour. And this is a a human controller. The scene. This is I love this. I love this. Rachel gets her group like gets suspicion she, thrown on her in the most preteen girl way possible. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. Someone is just walking by. Like, I live I live in a major eastern east coast city. And god damn it, people will just walk through you. Like they must be on the <laughs> West Coast. Cause like if you know, you can't just say excuse me and not expect oh, no, to get no. dropped. Oh no, no. A human controller 
brush like jostles Rachel a little as as she brushes by and Rachel doesn't <laughs> say excuse me she says excuse me <laughs> in a sarcastic voice a mistake i knew it was a mistake as soon as the two little words were out of my mouth she sounds like taylor swift right now <laughs> <laughs> and the woman is like what did you say and she's like mm-hmm. uh, do I have a- <laughs> Uh, nothing. And she's like, great answer, Rachel. What's your name? And Rachel's like, I can't tell her my name's Rachel. She wants my Yerk name. And Tobias comes up with a great plan. This is some of the best, like, strategy we've seen from Tobias. He's finally able to participate. Which I think if the three of us can come up with a Yerk name on the spot, I feel like Innis something something, right? Just say Innis. Yeah, just say Innis. Innis has got to be the John Smith. Of, of your names, <laughs> yeah, and then I'm throw in a his four four nine, like or right. something. Like, right, it's that easy. I'm really Just low like, ranking. You're right. I sh- I was rude, but like, right. But Tobias's plan is to say, "This lady, you know, you don't need to know her name." And she's like, "Oh, why is that? You're probably spies. You guys are spies." And Tobias is like, "Oh, her name's not your concern, cause uh, cause uh, his name." Is your concern? And he points at X. Specifically, he jerks his thumb at X, mm-hmm. and he says, "Because <laughs> his name is Visser Three. I was not trying to make it gross. You, you- really <laughs> did. I'm sorry. Who? It seems like spies jumps to this woman's mind pretty quickly. Who does? Yeah. She what get? kind but of spies are here? Yeah. There must be like Human it must be like keep calming. Thing. Right. Keep calm and carry on style. There's signs about spies everywhere, like spy something, say something or something Maybe like the that. Andalites are still a threat. We don't know. But why Maybe. would you suspect the person who says, excuse me, is the spy? Like that Because doesn't... if you were another Yerk, you wouldn't be bothered by it because you're all up against all them Yerks in the Yerk yeah, pool. Yeah. You're all bumping and grinding no, against I, everyone I you do... know. Hold on, though. I do think that Eddie is correct. Like the last you thing are a spy right. would say is the last thing a spy would say is excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> you should respect me for I am a spy. <laughs> so yes, Tobias says that Axe is Visser Three, and Axe catches on really quickly and morphs back from human into Andalite. Into a sloth. So you <laughs> know he demorphs, demorphs into Andalite. And this is when we learn. All right, everybody prepare your champagne corks and your party poppers. Here we go, celebrating our promotion. has been promoted. Uh, Only Visser 1 has an Andalite body. Rachel's not happy for him. No. You know what? She's she's rude, though. She doesn't play the game. Like, the thing is, if you want to get ahead, in it, it's a yurky, yurk world out there. <laughs> Do we think Visser 2 has kept their position? Visser 2 is still I don't know. Visser Who two. the hell is Visser 2? We don't know, but did Visser yeah. 1 and Visser 3 swap? I doubt the existence of this or two. How much do we buy Rachel's excuse to the woman about why she called him or why they called him Visser three of, oh, well, when we were all comrades in arms, he was Visser three. So we still call him that. Right. I like I think this is a three is a title. Right. Like, yeah. Not a so name. why would that be? That'd be like calling your friend the king, the right. prince, because he was the prince or when you were born. Principal right. Chapman. It's titular. Back when Principal Chapman was a principal, I don't think mm-hmm. you don't. I don't think you address people casually. If you're comrades in arms, I don't think you're using titles. No, his his actual name is like Greg or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Axe really sells it though. He does a whole thing. He's like, "Oh, you don't have to, you know, apologize. I would have killed you if you hadn't been remaining vigilant. You know, because you would have been being careless. It is good that you are wary of others." Now leave. And she says, yes, my visitor, mm-hmm. yes. And then he should have killed her on the spot for not being <laughs> wary. We know that Axe has no compunctions about just murdering people. Yeah. <laughs> so they, they've done this. They've gotten her to leave. And they're like, how are we going to do this? Everybody's going to hear that Visser 3 is here. And we're going to have to like play this game. And Jake's like, how long is the Elemist going to leave us here? Like, what, what's the point? Tobias thinks it's because they're not convinced yet. But they're all like, guys... We were trying to say yes to his scheme. Right. When, like the condition was we would be like, warped away immediately. And we and, obviously weren't. And so here we are. And Cassie continues this thread of th- saying there must be something more he wants us to see. Something mm-hmm. we don't get yet. They continue observing. They observe like that the York Pool has six peers. 
like for dumping Yurks and collecting Yurks, take it away, Ed. Over it all loom the EGS tower, topped off by the glass dome. Yeah. And they start wondering why they tore down all these buildings to put in a Yurk pool. There's open space. But they don't get a chance to answer those questions because suddenly there's a low roar coming from the sky. A bug fighter swoops down and lands... Near the side of the Yurk pool. It does a sick loop around the EGS tower, and though. Th- now we come to the point we were talking about earlier. All of a sudden, the Animorphs feel drawn towards the bug fighter. And yeah. Rachel mm-hmm. says, maybe it was some strange psychic urging. Maybe it was the Elemist making me go closer to see what he wanted to show me. You're right. Worried the Elemist could him. have been in control of this. We've been pushing a lot of stuff onto the Andalites. But with our knowledge of their powers, I don't know that Elfangor could have interfered with them from that far away when they were at the mall and he hadn't even crashed yet. But Mm -hmm. the Elemist definitely could. Here's the thing, though. If the Elemists are the true enemies of the Yurk, if the Elemists somehow sit above the Yurk, have all this power, why would they fight so indirectly? We'll never know. But it is bizarre to think like that they would summon five children from a mall to go outside at the same time to meet an Andalite to get the power to morph just so seven books later (laughs) or six books later, they could like show them what the future looks like because the implication is that the Elemist is so powerful that the Elemist knows that this event, historically, four-dimensionally speaking, is like a tipping point. Yeah, and you see, I think the problem is you're thinking of time linearly and that's why you're struggling with it, but he doesn't. What? But also, it's not necessarily, there's not one Elemist. The Elemists are a race, that's true. right? So it could be this one Elemist rebelling against that's true. the wishes of the but other. But I would say, based on what this Elemist has told us, it makes sense because they don't say that they're the enemies of the Yerks. What they say is that they love life. But that would, in theory, make them the enemy of the Yerks because the Yerks want to destroy all life that's not useful to them. Yeah. So well, they just and they build like very efficient life. public transportation. The elements, right. Yes. The Yerks the Yerks are like trying to make life better. And then the Elemist is like, no, I liked it when it was freaky and we all didn't have jobs in the early 20s. Hey, the Yurks you know, have or- lots of jobs in our current place in the timeline. <laughs> They're park rangers. They're math teachers. Oh, no, I, no I'm saying the Yurks are pilots. the grownups. Uh. I'm saying the Yurks are the grownups. I meant to say that the Elemist wants us all to continue living li- uh, forever Oh, yeah, he's like young. your stoner little, say, like, he's sorry. like your stoner right. middle brother, you know, right. who, like, it's, isn't going out and getting a job like your older brother, but is too old to be doing what the little brother's doing, and but he won't right, stop. Right, like Eddie. It, right. <laughs> yeah. And the thing... <laughs> so the ship lands. This bug ship, this big big bug ship, regular size bug ship, this bug ship comes in, lands by the well, Yerk Well, big pool. for a bug, but small for a ship. <laughs> And they are drawn to it. And so they go over to it. And Rachel seemingly wants to try to protect them. Like, she feels like she's the one being called. And she has no idea that her friends might be being called, too. Because she's like, you guys stay back. And they're like, oh, what? We got the great and terrible Visser here. You know, we're going to be fine. And I love, there's just like a brief description of X. And it says he's swaggering. Yeah. (laughs) And I just have this image in my mind of, like, Two sets of swaying hips and a swishing tail. You know what I mean? So when you're (laughs) swaggering, he's swaggering. He still has the dainty paws, right? Oh, yes. Dainty hooks. hooks. If anything, they've gotten dainty. Yes, that's what I'm thinking too, yeah. As we're getting closer and closer to the bug ship, there's a crowd of controllers, humans, orc bajir taxons, and a few odd species I had never seen. I want to see the species. They swagger. Now everyone's swaggering. We swaggered up to the bug fighter like the bosses of all the world. Then the door of the bug fighter. Oh, it really is keeping that child's view of work going. Yeah. And who emerges from the bug fighter? Visser one, but not Marco's mom. An Andalite. Yes. We know him as Visser three. <laughs> yeah. And no, apparently, but he got a promotion, Miranda. <laughs> apparently, just, side, I, I know, I need to stop that. dead naming Visser three. Um, <laughs> apparently, seeing Axe and Visser three side by side, there is no question. And, like, to me, my brain goes, well, yeah, isn't Axe a child? Mm-hmm. But apparently, it's more about their aura. Mm hmm. What do you emanate? Um, that yeah. Genesee Visser. Yeah. Genesee Visser. <laughs> and then. 
a little human steps out at, right as he says, well, well, right on schedule, just as you said it would be. And the human, she's, she's pretty. She's like maybe 20, 22, that area. She, she's got blonde hair. It's cut short. kind of a utilitarian cut. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think it, you know, maybe doesn't suit her. She has no makeup. Like a young Hillary Clinton. <laughs> Very plain clothes. <laughs> You're reading between the lines. Yes, Chris. <laughs> she, wore she knows right away. Rachel knows that this is future Rachel. Yes. So she greets her they by greet name. each other. Hello, Rachel, the woman said to me. Hello, Rachel, I replied. I like to think they actually said it at the same time. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then they're like, oh, 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 I'm sorry. Reading. Like, what did you? Well, oh, uh, uh, oh, no, he- no. Oh. <laughs> Rachel, future Rachel. Chapter 21 is like, for those reading at home. I knew you were coming, of course. After all, I was you. I once stood where you stand. I like to think that the yerk in her head doesn't know what Rachel actually <laughs> talked like. <laughs> and it's just like riffing. Yeah. Yeah. It's like original pronunciation in Shakespeare <laughs> plays. Like, it's yes, like, this yes. is how we believed Rachel would have talked a mere 10 years ago. Uh, Bitter Three says, If only I had known from the start that you were humans for so long, I believed you were Andalites. Until, at last, we caught you. They keep referring to this indefinite amount of time that they pursued yes, the animals. Yes, being very, very mm-hmm. big. I, I want to know exactly how many books did it take for them to find them. Yeah. But then, you know, Rachel and Rachel, again, have a little a little bit of a tete-a-tete. You know, they're like fighting a little bit. Well, not fighting. She's like, you're a controller. Yeah, yeah. And Rachel's like, oh, of course I'm a controller. Everybody's a controller now. The human race has achieved its destiny as hosts for the year race. Which sounds I'm gonna great. do a different voice every time. <laughs> this is a wild voice. This is almost <laughs> as good as my Werner Herzog. <laughs> but <laughs> Honestly, then, it's a better Werner Herzog than my <laughs> Werner Herzog. They try to call him out and be like, you don't actually know anything you don't even know how we came to be here and viscer three is like oh you brought by an elemist i know that and he says in your own time you face a choice the elemist has brought you six humans you five humans and one andalite here to show you a future here to show you the future his mistake was simply explained away by his many fingered hands like he (laughs) He miscounted (laughs) he miscounted yeah (laughs) soon he will return to your own time return you to your own time and so you know, they ask the older Rachel what choice they made. And she's like, well, obviously you made the right choice because I'm here. And she's going to have a different voice every time she talks. <laughs> I love that. It's like when Eddie Izzard does Bond villains. <laughs> Jake's like mad about it. He's like, who cares? So what? Maybe it's not set in stone. You know, maybe we are going to take the Elemist's offer and then Rachel couldn't be a controller. But there's no reaction from older Rachel or Visser 3, like no discernible reaction from them saying this. They don't flinch. They don't break. They don't show anything. Rachel's starting to put it together. Uh She's like, you have to know what we decided if you're me from the future. So either you're here to change what I decided, but no, then that might change all of this or else you're here because you being here is what caused me to decide whatever I decided. And this is like, oh, confusing, isn't it? I mean, I'm not going to lie. I've watched a lot of like sci-fi time travel stuff. Yeah. And that was like a hell of a sentence. Like, yeah, like, it's I, rough. Something weird happens. I'm, as This whole thing is weird. But something weird happens in the middle of all this weird. And that is that Cassie sort of tells off older Rachel and is like, you're not my, like the real Rachel. Yeah. So you're not my best friend. Uh-huh. I don't have to talk to you. And she turns away to leave and she starts to walk and she trips and she falls against our Rachel Mm -hmm. and future Rachel reaches out to steady her. Yeah. And I'm blown away by this because like, (laughs) yeah, even, even knowing how the book ends and knowing anything that we do or do not know, you know, Ooh, secrets, but like, is there some sort of self-preservation instinct instinct so deeply coded into humans that when seeing a version of herself about to fall down, despite being yerked, she reached out to catch her. Axe apparently misinterpreted her intentions <laughs> and thought she was lunging at her with malice, and so he whips his blade to her throat. I, I feel like mm-hmm. there, this didn't need to be such a complicated little... It's such a small moment, <laughs> but everything 
depends on it for this scene. And I feel like there was a way to do it better. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I, I mean, it's a tough moment to pull off, but like, oh my God, it feels under supported because like, we're about to get so weird. Yeah. Now. Like, Cause this is cause- the moment when their masks break. Mm-hmm. Visser three and future Rachel seem scared Com- and confused. confused. Nothing's going right. Suddenly it dawns on Rachel who's watching their reaction that like that wasn't in the script that when Rachel yurked Rachel controller 22 edition was here in the past. This did not happen. No, which means her past had to be different, which means she's not this Rachel's future. Right. Which means to me that they did lose the war at one point. And the Elemist has stepped in to correct that. In in a weird way, if she lived her entire life to get to this point to meet these kids, this could have happened a million times over and gone yeah. just fine. And then the Elemist shows up later, so and so to speak, but like later not being in time, but in whatever dimension times of times happen, whatever like derivative of or integral of like, whatever. Anyway, the point is, this loop has been stable, and it is no longer stable. Yeah, yeah. Well, here's the thing, right? So, Rachel says this. She says, this wasn't supposed to happen. Something has changed. And then, this is where I want to focus in. It's Axe, isn't it? You said six humans before. That's what you expected to find. Mm-hmm. That's what mm-hmm. Rachel told you would happen. But the future has changed, hasn't it? Something is different. So here's my question. Does that mean that in older Rachel's timeline, there were six human anamorphs? And who is that sixth person? Mm. Are we going to find them? Are we going to meet them? Because it wasn't Axe. That's an insane question. Or could it's a good question. Wait, could, it, could it have been Axe yes, and human yes, morph could, and that he would, never morphed No, out? it couldn't be because then that Rachel would have been lying. You're right. You're right. Rachel would have always known the truth. And Yerked Rachel couldn't lie about that. You're correct. Yeah, yeah. Do we think yeah. it's Fluffers but Kitty's owner? <laughs> um, Melissa! Not Fluffers but Kitty's Is it Melissa? Fluffer. Yeah, yeah, it's Melissa. <laughs> it doesn't in theory mean that they're important in this timeline, but I still want to know who they are. Yeah. No, that's a really good point. Yeah. I mean, were there any close calls from the first book? Oh, is yes. it Juan? Is it Terry? Is it's, it Eileen? It's the the homeless man who was killed <gasps> at the construction site. <laughs> they were like, he In knows one too time much. Line, Jake saves him. Yeah. Yeah. They're like, he knows too much. He has to be one of us now. So v- the Visser three, Visser three, now Visser one tries to like wave this away. He's like, oh, oh, I'm gonna scare him. It's gonna be fine. And he's like, you know what I did when I finally caught you, you little anamorphs? You know what I did? I gave each of you to one of my favorite people, my favorite Yerks, so that you would be mine. You would be my, like, in my pocket, under my control. And then I killed your bird friend and roasted his body. Because <laughs> the size him. of the head does seem to be important. Yeah. They can't <laughs> yerk a burb. Yeah, yeah. That's what I've been told. Yeah, and then we get, like, a grotesque description of them eating Tobias using, they barbecue him. And um, yeah, yeah, I've never I've never eaten a red tailed hawk, but tough and stringy sounds about right. Yeah. And then he um, says, we added a sauce you humans have barbecue, I believe. If he had done called. the axe stuttering <laughs> thing, that would have Bar- been so good. So I can Bar- say barbecue. I remember Bar-ba-cue. reading this. This is one of those moments I remember reading as a kid. And it was so horrifying to me that they, I remember rereading this passage like, no, they they can't eat <laughs> Tobias. And the idea that they ate him was just, I couldn't comprehend it, that they would do that to a character. So I feel like lots of kids must have had that I reaction. Mean, they did it off screen, technically. But the description, I guess. The idea of Rachel. Yeah, it's, so we pretty, get that it's pretty visceral. Rachel uh, is, eats a leg of it and she laughs after she eats it. It's just so evil. It's so despicable what they yeah. have Rachel do with it. And I, at least as a kid, it was... Deeply upsetting, which I think we still found. Oh, it's horrifying. As a kid, this is a kid's book. Yeah. This is for children. And literally a boy turned into a burb who turned into barbecue. (laughs) Like that's insane. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. And it the next sentence isn't much better. Rachel really (laughs) wanted to morph right then. I really wanted to become a grizzly and tear Visser 3 a few new holes. Yeah. Also still in a kid's book. 
Yeah. What holes is she referring? Yes. Yeah. We, we don't, don't know, know which holes. Well, they don't have mouths. Yeah. Andalites don't right. have mouths. So do they have buttholes? Yes. They definitely poop, can, and I think they poop out their hooves. No, you can no. excrete waste in other ways. They eat through their hooves. They don't eat. You know so they don't think poop they, through where they eat. No. You're right. They don't have like some, yeah. Maybe right. they sweat That's it true. out like uh, like snakes but maybe, stuff. But maybe it's like the back hooves. <laughs> the back hooves are for poop. pooping. No. Yeah. I think they have That's buttholes. basically how it works in a person. In predictable spots. So I'm saying it's the hooves <laughs> because it would be the front hooves are the farthest away from the back hooves. Okay, but okay. They no. eat and I want it on record. I think the Andalite butthole is in a predictable spot. It's the same as a horse. <laughs> Miranda, I don't know if Wait, we want predictable, to predictable. Predictable in what regard? Like, like the same as a horse or a deer, or like a that same sort of Where, like. Yeah. I thought they pooped through their hooves. <laughs> so be right under their tail. Yeah. Yeah. Which is on their so face. they can conceal it <laughs> anyway. in tasteful settings, you know. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, we're gonna cut a concept this entire they bit. do not have taste. I do anyway, think it is wild. I do think. <laughs> <laughs> um, Miranda, anyway. do you want to take? Do you want to go on record where your prediction is? Because it'll come up. Yeah, I think it's probably. I think it's probably either a totally normal butthole in a totally normal place, or they excrete waste through sweat or some type of gland like that. Oh God. The alternate so title for the Andalite Chronicles was a totally normal butthole in a totally normal <laughs> place. <laughs> no, that's the little blurb. The little thing. <laughs> oh my Get God. Get ready for no, everything you know I, about Andalites to change. Uh, anyway, so Visser 3 goes into all these like scare tactics and threats and Axe now is like picking up what Rachel's putting down and he's like, oh, he can't hurt us. He might change history. He's not going to do that. Here is the thing about that. Are we about to launch into this? May I get up on my little soapbox yet? You sure. let me know, Miranda. I don't my know. Soapbox- How long is your soapbox going to be? It's not long. How we many have- football Wait, fields just, wide is your soapbox? Three football fields <laughs> wide as it so is. So I feel like long. I'm imagining a tiny Chris really waiting to put their <laughs> stool on the ground. Like- oh, yeah. I have, I'm have. i holding a stool right now. Yeah. Chris, get we ready. just discussed that. Those go in the toilet. <laughs> No, they go out of my back hoops and, <laughs> and somebody else picks them up. The point is, I really do not believe that it makes sense that if their goal is to win a war, that even though they won based on a condition that felt good to them at one point, if you hand me the child Andalites, why wouldn't you just kill them right away? Like, very I guess seriously. That makes like, sense. Like, seriously, they're they're there. They're outnumbered. The war is over and you can kill them and it will affect the past. And then you don't have to have Rachel as your right hand man. So wait, I want like, to. I feel like we've gotten pretty abstract because I, 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 I just want to. I just want to. You get it. I get it. Right. I, we have Axe with his tail blade against Visser 3's throat. We're outside the right. bug fighter. And Axe and Rachel and the gang are starting to get suspicious that they have the upper hand right now, despite being surrounded. You're saying, why can't... So Axe has his tail blade at Visser 3's throat. Yes. Why can't Visser 3 and control, Rachel Controller just kill them, right? Like, yeah. Like, Visser 3 has never had any hesitation to kill anyone before, no matter how close to them they are. He's eaten people in front of us, blah, blah, blah. It doesn't matter. What I think you're saying is... Obviously, fewer of the Andalite bandits, even if you think they're Andalite bandits, is a net gain. They will do less damage to the war effort and die sooner if there's fewer of them. So why wouldn't you just take this opportunity to even kill all of them now? Because then in their timeline, there's no Animorphs fighting the Yerks. So you just guaranteed victory in another timeline. So from the book's perspective, because I think where the books are coming from is that Visser 3 is thinking, I can't kill them because I don't know how that will affect me where I am in the timeline, right? Because he the, the book's idea is that mm-hmm. things will become unpredictable if the Animorphs are killed, right? Right. Well, yeah, he right. has an idea of how, how the future for the Animorphs is going to go from Rachel's perspective. Mm-hmm. Well, he has access to the whole history. I yeah. think my only point is, is like, they could have killed they them. They believe there's a causal link. They could have killed them. They are not invincible. I don't think it's actually logical for them to think that they're invincible here. Right. No. Okay. 
Well, okay. based on based on how Visser three and Rachel are reacting right now, I think they have reason to make the deci- like to make the conclusion that they're afraid of hurting them. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's logical to be afraid of hurting them. Miranda, do you think this scene where they future Rachel has eaten Tobias? Um, does that bring us any closer to the possibility that we will see? The Animorphs. You're predicted. Yes. Your dark moment where they're eating their own animal limbs. I think it becomes more possible, right? I, I, it starts to become more possible, but he definitely dies in that scenario. So that's not quite what we want to see. I think there's, no, I agree. I think there's some moments coming up. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Yes. So that's, yeah, I totally (laughs) agree. Yeah, let's keep going. So yeah, they don't think, they now think they're like invincible Axe because, says right. that he, he, they're afraid to hurt them because they don't know what it'll do to the past. Mm-hmm. And so they're like, oh, he can't hurt us, but we can totally hurt them. And so Rachel's like, oh, so you say you killed and ate my friend Tobias here. And then she turns into a bear. <laughs> she didn't even wait to finish morphing the whole way. She's yeah. like, no, I'm totally bare enough. I'll just like go for she it. She <laughs> says that. And I think you marked it, Chris. I was bare enough. I yeah. love this attitude. I don't know what it is, but she literally, yeah, she literally says I was bare enough. And like, you know what? Next time I'm, uh, you know, I just like it. And then I two, I like, like it. two lines later, she uses the verb barreled. Yes. I barreled <laughs> toward him. She also calls yeah, but she didn't make three, a pun. you filth, which I. Is new for Rachel. I, th- I don't. She's think- she's picking up Yerk Yerk language. Yeah, yeah. And mm-hmm. then she she draws back one huge claw, swings with all of her might at Visser Three, and then instead of hitting Visser Three, she hits the trunk of a tree, and they're back. I had him. And she was a human again. Yes. She, her mm-hmm. human hand hits the trunk of a tree. In the woods behind Cassie's farm. And she has her Sweeney Todd's epiphany. <laughs> I had him. I had His him. throat was. Bear, bear beneath, beneath my, my head. head. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so the point is, she's punching a tree. <laughs> I'm sick of this. I'm right. sick of this. I had him. She's yelling about it. Cassie's like point? comforting her. That it's fine. That's not even the Visser three we know. That's like a fictional future Visser. Right. And a pisser of a Visser. And Rachel's just like, what? What's we lose? Okay, before we were sure. Or mm-hmm. before we thought we were sure we'd lose, now we're sure, sure we'd lose. We're like 100% sure. Why would we decide to stay and fight if that's what's going to happen to us? Mm-hmm. Oh, and they even address the thing that I was just saying. Alex X says it could still all be an Elemis trick. And Rachel says, no, you know it's not a trick, X, at least not the way you mean. If the Elemist wanted to force us to do something, he has more than enough power. So like they address actually the idea that it wasn't yeah. real. And uh, Jake says we need to think things through. And she says she's tired of thinking. And she's like, you know what? I was just about to be the person that everyone wanted me to be and be the brave person and vote to stay and fight. But but you know what? No, I'm not going to be a controller. That's it. I'm done. Mm-hmm. So, and what she's talking about is so we're back to this where we left off in episode two at the end. Yes. They're talking about this decision of whether or not they're going to go to the Elemis, basically like zoo on another planet and just be the only living humans and have the task of like repopulating or staying and fighting the Yerks, right? Like that's the decision yeah. happening here. Yeah. And she says she feels good in the moment after she does it. You know, the relief the is just yeah. a real thing. There's a, I think it's a, a John Mulaney joke that's in terms of instant relief, canceling plans is like heroin. <laughs> yeah. And that's wait, what that's I, so that's so weird because Marie, way before John Mulaney was born, was <laughs> saying was saying there's no greater high than canceling plans. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we get this, we get the big the big vote again. Like we're jumped right back to where we were, where they're all sort of talking through it because they were voting when we got sent to the future and they're voting now. And um, with the information the Elemist has given them, they quickly fold like Cassie, Rachel Mm -hmm. and Marco all end up being votes in favor of stopping the fight. Right. And then Mm -hmm. um, Axe says he'll follow Prince Jake. Tobias, I think, folds soon after. He tries to frame it. Yeah. He's like, we could mount a comeback. You know, we can't mount a comeback if we're all controllers. If some of us are, you know, like maybe it could be like bringing the wolves back to the national parks someday. He says he like, you know, tries to say to 
Jake, you know, it's like, you know, I would never run from a fight. I, I might fly away. I might bird. fly, yeah. And one thing we know about Jake is that he'll go wherever Tobias goes because it's that's true. right. Yeah, it's and true. so the moment Tobias switches sides, Jake says, Elemist, we have decided. The answer is yes. And they're waiting to be transported immediately to this distant planet that the Elemist has promised, but nothing happens. They all like close their eyes and click their <laughs> heels and not a damn nothing. thing happens. Yeah. yeah. And that's how the book ends. <laughs> yeah, it could um, be. The series, really. <laughs> so nothing happens. They just yeah, have to no go explainer. about their life. You know, yeah, they, they're cut. like, we answered your questions, but you're like, we, we voted and you just didn't listen. Yeah. We were supposed mm-hmm. to get teleported right away and we didn't. So yeah, it's just. They should be in the zoo right yeah. now. Yeah. But the, the menagerie. We're with Miss Paloma. Miss Paloma talking about what led up to the Second World War. And about how America could have been more helpful and maybe fewer people would have died, but we were committed to our image of being peaceful. Yeah. I'm not sure we ever see the actual Miss Paloma. I think we have Puppet Paloma right now. (laughs) I think the Paloma replacement, if you will, the Paloma placement happens mid-scene. They just got lucky with what she was talking about. (laughs) No, it's like... This is really weird because two days ago our lecture was on the, you know, the American Civil War and suddenly. <laughs> Jump into World War II. Yeah. Rachel can't help but wonder if Ms. Paloma was the, you know, skeleton that was laying across the desk. And her lecture is apparently not very interesting. She refers to her as droning. Which I think tells you how Kay Applegate feels about this perspective. Eddie, I, ju- <laughs> I just read your note about like, was it Miss Paloma who's the skeleton? And Eddie's note is, is just, just ask her. <laughs> <laughs> just the idea of walking up to your teacher and be like, hey, I warped to the future and I saw a skeleton on <laughs> your desk. I was wondering, was that you? you? I think that falls that under you? things you're not allowed to say in 2020. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, because it would, so yeah, random. that's a lot. That's very much like being like, hey, I was scrolling on tinder and i saw someone is that you my teacher yeah, yeah. like or i found your only fans is this you yeah. like, <laughs> miss paloma's only fans moving on oh, but yeah. so miss paloma's saying because we were so devoted to peace we may have made the war worse we'll never know for sure because you can't really second guess history and can rachel's like you oh you can if you're an elemist and then cassie uncharacteristically chimes and she goes why not why can't you second guess history? I mean, what if you Ms. could Paloma, go back? Yeah, Miss Paloma, assume I was some sort of elemist <laughs> and that I'd be given an offer. And Ms. Paloma gives us a butterfly effect speech. It's very, it's right. a very nice speech. Ashton Kutcher, it had just re- been released. Events are always intertwined in ways we can, or are intertwined in ways we can not always see, Cassie. You know, they say a single butterfly beating its wings in China might, Live to see another day. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> Cassie needed to My say yes when she says, you know, they say. She just said, who says? Who says? <laughs> who says? <laughs> yeah. And then she says, the world isn't like arithmetic. It isn't just one plus one equals two. It's more complicated than that, which I want to be clear. There's arithmetic that is a lot more complicated than that. She's not a math teacher, though. She's a history teacher. She repeats much more complicated than that. And she turns, mm-hmm. she looks right into Rachel's eyes and she says, This teacher is about to break. A single butterfly. A single butterfly. A single butterfly. It has to slowly become Werner Herzog's <laughs> voice, I think. <laughs> a single butterfly. And boy, if you want to hear the word butterfly repeated over and over again, this second <laughs> half of this book, or like the last third, really. <laughs> this, yeah. I'm, it's a wonder it wasn't Rachel turning into a butterfly on the cover. <laughs> so Miss Paloma snaps out of her little trance and is like, oh, okay, well, you know what the reading is. Do that. <laughs> She just had a tough day. <laughs> and uh, Cassie Cassie and Rachel make their way out and have a conversation in the hallway about how weird it was that she just like stared into her eyes and was like, small things can have large changes. And, <laughs> like, and mm-hmm. there's, I, I hate this sentence. I This just stuck out to me in a, a way that not many have, in, at least in a few books. Out in the fast moving crush of bodies in the hall, we made our way to our lockers. And I was like, there was an easier way of saying that. Like, Yeah, it feels very reminiscent of the tangle of limbs yeah. that, uh, that 
It's like a fanfic phrase, yeah, kind of. The fast moving yeah, crush of bodies. Have you ever read the first page of the Pokemon the movie novel? No. No. Yes. Yeah. It's, I mean, yes. Like insane. when I was six, but it's like it's insane. It's the lab scene, right? The oh, they so they they uh novel. they skip. The Pikachu short. Yes, they skip the <laughs> Pikachu short in the novelization of the movie. <laughs> I still have I that song think... stuck in my head all these years later. So they're having this conversation <laughs> about how weird the Paloma incident was. And Cassie's like, yeah, it was it was weird. And Rachel's like, who knows what's weird anymore? I keep waiting for us to get zapped to a planet. And that's when they start to kind of think about Maybe he wasn't showing us that future in the hopes that we would say we wanted to be saved. Maybe mm-hmm. he was trying to show us something else. Mm-hmm. He definitely made it look like he was trying to manipulate us into agreeing with him. But actually, the first time we saw him, he made sure that we were in a position to see the drop shaft so we could escape. Then what does he do? They say that. They're willing to go to this zoo, and he doesn't take them. He shows them the future, even though they'd already Mm -hmm. given the answer he ostensibly kind of wanted. He showed us all these things to make us say yes. We said yes, so why do I feel like I'm missing something? Why do I feel like he's trying to show me something else? Mm -hmm. And she gets a little line as Cassie runs off and is like, you know, I might be taken to, you know, another planet at any moment, but for now I have to play volleyball for gym class. To prepare for night volleyball. Mm -hmm. Rachel thinks about Ms. Paloma, you know, she said a single butterfly, I thought. But how is the butterfly supposed to know when to beat her wings? (laughs) The answer, like, it's a very, I I like this line, but also, like, the butterfly is just beating its wings to stay alive. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, it's just, it's just living its life. It's never about that saying has never been about a butterfly making a conscious choice to start a tornado. Right. right. The right. Side I think someone, yeah, 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 yeah. someone comes back to later, I think. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which incidentally means we should be killing every butterfly yes. we see because tornadoes cause a lot of damage. Very dangerous. Butterflies are causing, causing climate change. That's what I've been saying for years. Yeah. <laughs> it's not just, um, what are they, spotted lanternflies. Oh, no, Jesus no, yeah. Christ. Don't get me yeah. started. And then we get a montage, chapter 23. Yeah. It's a dream, a dream montage. A dream. Yeah. And and Jake isn't in a hot tub with lobsters this time. Yeah. <laughs> My favorite Animorphs dream. Yeah. Or it's Chapman. I'm sorry. It's Chapman in a it's Chapman in a hot tub with lobsters. <laughs> with Prince Alfango, uh, I think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and they're both wearing shirts that they're gonna take off. It's weird. Yeah. <laughs> it's like they never take the shirts off, but I know they're going yeah. to. It's like yeah. one of those weird yeah. dream things. Yeah. <laughs> so Rachel's dreaming about being stuck to the taxon's tongue. Axe talking about how the Yerk pool is like almost a religion for the Yerks, about morphing into the bear and being stuck and having butterfly wings and the right. fact that he showed them the the drop shaft, which she gets as Cassie murmuring in the back of her mind, which I think uh-huh. is interesting because Cassie didn't murmur that. Right. You know what I mean? She just so said that. She, she made shouted this up. it. <laughs> it really is a Simpsons flashback yes. moment. Like Springfield is a part no, of us no, all. It's how I, a part of us it's all. Like, a part of it's us all. One image to, was it transposed on top of another, and like they keep coming towards yes. you. And yeah, like, yeah, like the layer. Right. She's running, going down this corridor. She's a butterfly, but she's not a butterfly. She's chasing a light that never gets closer. And then she thinks the Candrona, the, the light. Candrona. Is the Candrona. The center of their lives. She's... Almost a religion. No, <laughs> the Yerk Pool, the Candrona. That's the center. That is their light. He showed us the drop shaft, Cassie said again. Mm-hmm. Only now she was Miss Paloma. My eyes snapped mm-hmm. open. Mm-hmm. I sat up in bed and I said, ha ha. I was electric. And, what? No, no, you missed You missed the other part. She said, ha ha, in the darkness of my room. Yes. Yes. And which is what I say every morning when I wake and up. Sarah and Jordan that is literally don't share a room with her. nothing. They're heavy sleepers. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of Animorphs family heavy sleepers. We're about to find out. In this <laughs> she yells chapters. that, and then she whispers to herself, "Got him! Oh man, we got him!" Got the disgusting worms. <laughs> and then she talks. She shucks and then, off her t-shirt. Yeah, she, yeah, shucks she shucked, off. She shucked off a t-shirt. She wears the bed and quickly got into her morphing. I want to say, okay, I want to go back to this, and I know it's not related, and I just, but I want to hit this. 
We're allowed to say she that Rachel shucked off her t-shirt to change into her morphing outfit, but we're not allowed to say that Jake took his clothes off before he morphed a cockroach yes, for the first time seriously. to prevent him from morphing into his pants. Well, right. Like, right. <laughs> and walked right. the it's, masturbation line a little bit too close already <laughs> with Jake. So. Yeah. <laughs> she throws open the window. She's like, oh, it's going to be Saturday. If mom finds me gone, she might worry. So she writes so a, note her a note that she's like, I'm going to go for a run. I'm going to go to Cassie's. It's going to be fine. And then she looks at a picture of herself. Three-year-old <laughs> Rachel on a balance beam being held up by her father. And she's like, a butterfly flaps. <laughs> she's like, what would you think of me, dad, if I walked away when I still had a chance yes. to win? That is exactly the voice I hear it in. And he has a storm cloud, of course, over his face. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. He looks like the baddie from the magician's book one who has the twig and yes, leaves over yeah. his face the entire yeah. time. So she flies off and she, again, is a great horned owl. Sneaks up on Tobias, but she tries to warn him this time. She's like, don't panic. And I'm like, great start. Yeah, and you would think <laughs> that's how earlier yeah. when they talked, Any, they had so much trouble. They could have a code word. They would have come up with like a, a code word that's like, if I hear someone say sausages, I'll know that it's safe. And she's like, if you hear anyone <laughs> thought speak, isn't it probably us? Yeah, yeah. And he's like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> they don't get better at communicating. Instead, what Rachel says is, we're going to be butterflies, Tobias. We're going to Cassie's barn and then we're going to change history. And he just woke up. He just woke up. <laughs> like that butterfly that shot JFK. <laughs> <laughs> Grassy Knoll is a great place for butterflies. <laughs> I guess she does say, Tobias, I know the location of the Kendrona, but she could have opened with that. <laughs> she, yeah, she, clo- like, she ends with that. <laughs> but, <laughs> all right, so now we've got a line with 55 highlights that doesn't have anything to do with P. And <laughs> wait, which one is it? It's 3.47 in the morning, Marco said. And I'm here, thanks to the fact that my dad is a sound sleeper who doesn't notice when I wake up screaming because an owl and a hawk have just flown (laughs) through my window. So now, maybe you can tell us all why we're here. And I just want to say, it was very important to the plot for this moment that Marco's dad got a job again. Yes. Yeah. Because he used to stay up all night. Yeah. 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 He would have been like, hey, you're Alan Hawker here to see you. Like, (laughs) if this was, if this would had happened in book five, all right. Animorphs is over. Animorphs is canceled. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't know, man. Marco's dad was so checked out though. I really <laughs> think he'd be like, your two like, friends. Get those birds out of the house. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what you do, just get them out of here. Yeah. Like, the other thing I want to point out is that Marco made them wait earlier to tell them something because he didn't want to repeat himself. So I get, that's yeah. just some bullshit. Yeah. But also they brought like, Marco here. Like Rachel at least told Tobias that she knows where the Candrona is, but they've apparently picked true. up everyone else and not told them. Mm-hmm. So they're here and they've got everybody. Even Axe is here. They've got a teeny little light on so they can barely see, but nobody will see it from the house in the barn. And she's like, I know where the Candrona is. I know where it is. We got it. He's like, it's in my backpack. He's like, how, how'd you figure this out? She's like, the Elemist showed us. Shit, we all thought it was unfair when he appeared in the York pool and decided and asked us to decide right when we were about to be eaten, right? Mm-hmm. And Axe is like, well, Elemists don't care about fairness. And she's like, no, this time the Elemist appeared when we were about to be swallowed, but he showed us the drop shaft. He showed us the way out. And Jake's right. like, we saw it because it was there. He wasn't showing it to us. It's like, but he waited for us to come out of the place we were in before greeting us so that we'd have to be in the room with the drop shaft. Like, there's more evidence points to. Yeah. And then she's, someone's like, what if we're wrong? What if Cassie's right and the Elemist is telling the truth and we're just trying to, you know, fight back against someone who's trying to help us? And Mark was like, you know, if we lose in the future, then what's it all about? We've seen that future and supposedly nothing we do will matter. Rachel's like, no, it will. If it didn't, if it didn't matter, he wouldn't even ask. And Mark was like, okay, fine. But like, clearly he was trying to get us to say yes. And she's like, but we said yes. And he didn't take us. Mm -hmm. Why? And Cassie giving a very obvious wink, in my opinion. Yes, yeah. Uh, it's like, because he... <laughs> yeah, not the time to flirt, <laughs> Well, there's Cassie. only Come one on. tiny light bulb in the room, so maybe... <laughs> <laughs> maybe everybody yeah. missed it. She's like, because he wanted a different answer. And Cassie's like, 
He's trapped. He wants to save Earth, but he's not allowed to interfere. So what if you were in his position, what would you do? How would you try to get someone to make a decision that you want them to make without being allowed to tell them when, where, and why? And the answer is, you show it to them. And he showed us Earth. He said he wants to save it. He said it's beautiful and it's a work of art. And they're like, fine, if you're right, what is this way that he is proposing we, we like, make a difference? They're like, obviously, we got to take out the Candrona. Mm-hmm. It's like, mm-hmm. why is there a giant yerk pool downtown? Why do we even have the eggs tower in the first place, let alone why is it standing 20 years or 10 years <laughs> I from can't now? let you get away with that. Is why the EDS tower. <laughs> is there a tower of eggs? Why do we have a 60-floor tower made entirely of eggs? Of eggs. Yeah. <laughs> and Jake snapped his finger and said, the eggs are the Kendrona. And the Rachel eggs said, are close. The Kendrona. I just realized that Jake probably <laughs> thinks that he arrived at the answer on his own. Oh, Hundred percent. No, they're doing to Jake what the Elemist is doing to them, but they're not trying to hide it from Jake. He just doesn't. Know. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Which, I was just yeah, thinking. No, I love he... that Cassie and Rachel solved this, but Jake believes that he solved it. Oh, it's mm-hmm. the classic. What's the way to get a man to agree with you? You make it think it was his yes, idea. Yeah. Yeah. And so they're like, "Yes, that weird dome on top of the EGS tower." To be politically correct. <laughs> That's got to be where the Kendrona is. Like, why wouldn't they tear the building down? Like, it's clearly, like, ceremonial. And it's got to be where they located the first Kendrona on Earth. Like, that's why they made this giant yerk pool. That's why it's so important to them. And Rachel's like, that's what he wanted us to see. He technically didn't interfere. We're still making a choice. I love Marco's reaction. I can't believe it. That Elemist is a weasel. He found a loophole. I think I like that guy. <laughs> 57 <laughs> highlighters for that one. 57 <laughs> highlighters. <laughs> nice. <laughs> They're trying to ship Marco and the Elemist. <laughs> yeah, Jake's like, okay, so even if you're right, how do we know it will change the future? And she's like, we don't. Ca- Cassie says, we don't know it'll change the future, but things are connected. They say a single butterfly may take its wings says? in China. <laughs> Miss yeah, Paloma. <laughs> And then Tobias says, yes, but how does the butterfly know when to beat its wings? And Rachel's like, babe, we are connected (laughs) on another level. (laughs) (laughs) Rachel says, I guess it beats its wings the best it can and hopes it will all work out. But then Rachel suggests they all go buy a lot of scratchy lottery tickets, (laughs) which like that is the most confusing left turn this book has taken so A single butterfly. So if. 4,000 butterflies buy a lottery ticket. Their odds are great. No, Rachel, we talked about this. Increasing your odds from zero to one is statistically relevant. But beyond that, you would have to buy almost 100. So many scratch offs. <laughs> she wants to make a freaking weather machine out of butterflies in a cage. Like Maybe, maybe then her dad will be able to do his job from home if she controls the butterflies that control the weather. <laughs> if he controls the weather, he doesn't have to leave. <laughs> you yeah. just said it's rain. They come around to the idea and, and Marco says, and what do we do, Xena warrior princess? Rachel says, we kick your butt. <laughs> Which incidentally, <laughs> like this like triumphant resolve here is so big. I'm just imagining like her getting that wrong the first three times. And the first time she just punched Marco in the face. <laughs> like he's like. <laughs> it's 510 in the morning. Is that only because... Is the t- because they have the meeting at what three thirty? They get to the Three, tower like, yeah. at five ten. Is that just so that when a certain something falls, well, they have to take the bus? Uh, right. Well, no buses are running. Yeah, probably at three thirty in the morning. So they either had a to wait for something? a bus. Well, I'll, get, I'll come back to it. It also just in general needed to be this time of day to make sure there were the fewest number of people here. But they're also on like a tight clock because like people are gonna start showing mm-hmm, up mm-hmm, soon. Mm-hmm. So they're at the tower. All they see inside the building in the lobby is a sleepy uniformed guard. They make a point of saying there are dozens of businesses and law firms, like, try not to hurt. Right. They could just be corporate Yeah, Jake tries to be like, hey, a lot of them could just be normal people. Right. So, like, we don't necessarily need to to kill everybody. But if they're going to be like, hardworking capitalists, right? (laughs) Tobias can't get them any useful intel from the windows, but he's like, something something up high is giving off heat because I'm getting some real juicy thermals. Mm -hmm. 
Um, <laughs> Unlike I don't know that I like my that? choice of juicy. Did he really no, say he that? No, a beautiful no. updraft. <laughs> okay, I was going to say, if I missed a thermal in this, John, I would be so <laughs> bummed. And Jake, again, reiterates, take it easy on innocent bystanders, because Rachel's getting impatient. She's already in bear morph. And it's like, all right, mom. She's ready to eat what people. Miranda said. So they all morph. We get a Cassie all fours moment yep. as she's morphing into the wolf. Oh yeah, bram, 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 bram. see her, see, see her. And Tobias warns us that there warns them that a guy's coming up behind them and that he's probably drunk because he's carrying some kind of ba- bagel, <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> a food I always eat when I'm drunk. Sorry, <laughs> I I like skipped ahead to label with my eyes as I started to say bottle and it just. <laughs> It just came Miranda out. Miranda sees someone with a bagel and she always assumes that <laughs> they're drunk. I know. Yeah. New York City mornings are really rough for me because I assume that everyone is intoxicated. <laughs> so Cassie, I love this. I feel like Cassie interrupted the teacher. Cassie scares away this guy with the bagel. This drunk guy <laughs> with the bagel. Uh, lots of character growth. We hear the bagel crashing on the ground. <laughs> uh, Rachel is already fully the grizzly. That reminds me of what was the line earlier mm-hmm. that was really good. She's she's more than Mo- bear mostly now. bear. Yeah, yeah. She's or like, I was yeah. bare enough. That's right. Yeah. I was bare yeah, enough. She's more and than bare enough. It's now. her memoir. She's got fully it. the grizzly. They make the weird decision that Marco, as a gorilla, should be the first one to try to get into the building, and he walks up and he knocks on the glass. Yeah. Like, hey, I'm here for work. And the the guy answers the door. He's like, hey, get out of here. He draws his gun, which is an interesting choice. Everything he does is not what I would do if a gorilla showed up at a door. (laughs) Seriously, draws the gun for a gorilla and then also doesn't assume. But he tries to shoo the gorilla away. Like, like that's not the answer to this problem. You need to call somebody if there's a gorilla (laughs) wandering the streets. But then Marco Thought speaks him. Hi. I just came from a masquerade party and I was looking for Mr. Three. Mr. Three? Uh, (laughs) Sorry, guys, I'm super The guard's eyes went wide and he goes, and the light. And then Marco's like, oh, good, you are a controller and just punches him. And I think probably kills him. (laughs) Yeah, my note said, my mom said I could kill people like you. (laughs) Because Mm -hmm. Marco just punches through the glass. I do think we have to get better at like actually making sure we kill the Yurks because I'm just imagining that controllers come back through and collect the Yurks. Yeah, we should be taking these unconscious bodies hostage and tying them up. Yeah, yeah. Or like just really making sure to boil the head to 160 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> like, and just make sure all Yurks inside. I was are wondering dead. if. I want to be clear. The, again, the human brain would also probably not survive that. <laughs> yeah, but I mean, the guy's already dead because his body's Oh, all that's broke. fair. Okay, so yeah, you're telling like, the people who are already dead, not the people who are unconscious. We need to be making sure that the Yurks are also dead. Well, not, right, the human okay. part's dead. Let's make sure we're getting yeah, the my, my anyway. thought was, when the host dies, the Yurk probably crawls out of the ear. Like, it, even if it's hopeless to get anywhere, it's probably not going to stick around in a dead host, right? So they could just... Then do you right. think they could and just like, go around Yurk stomping? Yeah, I think so. Well, and I mean, there's a chance that the mice will get you. Oh. Yeah, depending so, on the city. Marco smashes the door open, Jake goes, move, move, move. And they all jump in. They jump through over the wreckage of the glass door because Rachel says she wasn't worried about it. But, you know, Axe and Cassie have those delicate feet. Now we get one of my favorite moments in the entire book. If you have the print edition of the original books, like there's a bear morph cover and then there's a picture of them and morph in the elevator together. (laughs) And it is so good. And this whole scene is just like, it's the strangest, not funny comic relief. I think it's scene. wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> no, it is wonderful, but it's not like, it's not like how funny, I don't know how to explain. It's like, you almost miss it, I think. The books do nothing like no, this. No, I agree. It's like some so, down, it's just, purpose, da- purposeful downtime where they're just. So mm-hmm. they get into the building and they're like, well, we're not going to fit in an elevator. And they're like, oh, there's probably a freight elevator. We'll go for that. But they can't all fit into it at once. So we get are more aggressive morphs. Jake mm-hmm. as a tiger, Marco as a gorilla, and Rachel as the bear. First, they cram themselves into a freight elevator mm-hmm. and manage very diffi- like manage very Delicately carefully to, to le- yeah. press a button for the top yeah, floor. Like, and they elect Rachel to do it, even though one of them's a freaking gorilla. Yeah, the gorilla really makes queen. more sense. Yeah, the yes. gorilla. <laughs> And then but they yeah, just get a weirdly long elevator ride up, 
where they're it's making jokes to the top where and they're making apparent- jokes about the maximum load <laughs> and like they're like did you see that new keanu reeves which movie? has to be the matrix <laughs> right asks, or speed mm-hmm, no, it has to be i don't or, it, i think speed because be matrix is 99 i think it was called the bus that couldn't slow down <laughs> <laughs> and suddenly they realize there's elevator music, but I like to believe that for some reason it just took a while to click on. Like like midway mm-hmm. through their ride, like the music clicked on in the freight elevator. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But the point is, this is a wild scene. It's very, like, very comic relief. They're talking about how bad the music is. They're just hanging out. The door opens, and this is a little awkward. Jake and Rachel say the same exact thing. It's at this true. Scene. It's Letter really- for, no, wait. Letter Jake, for letter. Jake gets one more R on all of his. Oh, and Rachel gets one more O. Oh, there you go. Yeah. That's so, feminism yeah. right there. That's equality. And but anyway, they both say row. <laughs> but Jake, Jake's a bit more on the on the R, the more phallic symbol. And the, no, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Rachel <laughs> charges like an enraged bull. I remind her gently that she is a yeah. bear. Yeah, you really don't need the you don't need the comparison. <laughs> she runs through the closest human, she says. She feels a slight thump mm-hmm. as his body was <laughs> knocked aside. She like picks up and carries a hork bajir with a tackle and hammers him mm-hmm. into a wall, she says. This whole fight scene sounds incredible, but it's not described very yes. clearly. It's a lot of yeah. limbs Jake, disappearing. Yeah, it's like Jake gets cut, Cassie and mm-hmm. Axe appear on the elevator and they're like, you know, what happened? We already took care of the, the welcoming committee. And she's like, Axe pushed the wrong button. Which, and the, you the know, one line uh-huh. that, Miranda, you were going to read that Rachel says, it didn't kill him. But he wasn't going anywhere. Yeah. Uh, so she's getting more comfortable with maybe not killing anyone, but she does some severe harm to them. This fight scene sounds incredible. Yeah. It's though. wild. Like, it, it sounds so violent. And, and they're like, like, we know there's more people than this. They have to have more people guarding the Candrona. So they go rushing off and they're looking around. Bear doesn't see very well, but she can smell the human controllers that ran away. Because that was the thing. There was a group of them at the beginning. And a lot adrenaline. of the human controllers ran away. Yeah. Mm-hmm, she smells their mm-hmm. adrenaline. So she follows them. She wants to show them who's boss, like the alpha male she is. And she just tears through a door. Cassie's like, look out, there's a door. And she's like, no, there fucking isn't. And she (laughs) she just rips through a door. (laughs) And there's eight orc bajir. And she can't see them because of her weak bear eyes. So she just starts barreling towards them, thinking they're just like, you know, little squishy humans. That's right. And she says, later... Everyone thought I was being brave. But you know what the truth was? The truth was, with my weak, bare eyesight, all I could see was a blur. I thought they were humans. I wasn't brave. I was just blind. And honestly, that's not a description of bravery. I don't know what yeah. is. Like, bravery yeah, is running yeah. into a situation without knowing the consequences. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, right. It's yeah. true. She says right as she gets up on them, she realizes they're hork bajir, but it's too late to make a change to her plan. And yeah, this happens in Overwatch all the time. Yeah. Sometimes your tank will run in early and you as support just have to follow. Oh, believe know? me, I know. When your dot's not DPS, it's a rough, t- it's a rough thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, then we get some good fight with the hork Oh, yeah. Those eight furry figures were very deadly hork and we get a wild battle with hork cursing at the yeah. Andalites? Well, we don't really animals. know what they're saying. They're speaking in hork they say, kill the Gaffner Kill the Gaffner. <laughs> <laughs> that's I think probably like, the fucking Andalites. Uh, yeah. Kill. Yeah, that's got to be. Fragant Andalite? H- Halif? Halif? That's actually, I believe, based upon the uh, the change, I believe Fragant is bleeping. Ah. Uh, <laughs> so I think it's kill the bleeping Andalite. Because, you, the because they realize kill. that they're like 11 year old, so they're trying. Yeah. They're children. Yeah, yeah. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Children are going to read this. You can't say Gaffner. You'll get an R rating if you say Gaffner more than twice. We get a number of like stills. She describes some like images that she sees. Cassie sinking her jaws in the throat of a hork bajir. Axe whipping his tail like a deadly bullwhip. Attacking a hork bajir (laughs) until he stood screaming, holding his own severed arm. (laughs) Yeah. And then in one of in the most troubling one for me, I saw Marco fighting with one arm as he held his own sliced stomach together with the other Mm -hmm. hand. 
Yeah, that's insane. This like is. <laughs> and I think they clearly omitted a line from him where yeah. he went, I sure am gutsy. Right, guys? <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm dying. <laughs> we get another like they wrap up the battle. It's just continues to get bloodier and bloodier. We get another curse word, alien curse word. Gifarek. Gifarach. 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 You think that's related to Gaffner? I think so. I yes. Probably. Yeah. It's like freak or fuck Fucker. or something. This is a crazy line. Like a crazy little thing. I couldn't tell who was winning. I couldn't tell who was hurt. It all became one long cry. One long scream of rage. Yeah. Or mm-hmm. Bajir and Anamorph. Alien and animal. And then we were, f- we yeah. were flesh and blood creatures thrown into a meat grinder. Yeah. 13 it, deadly like, animals locked in combat to the death. The imagery in this fucking chapter is... I felt the bear weakening as he was cut again and again by hork Bashir blades. I was losing blood. The human part of me knew that. I could feel my strength ebbing. And then she definitely kills. There's one definite kill that Rachel won't yep. quite let herself sit with. I charged again and hit a hork Bashir in the stomach. I carried him along with my momentum as he slashed wildly at me. Crash! I'd hit something. Glass, it had shattered. A window. I had shoved the hork Bashir through the window. <laughs> ah! I like to think it's a Wilhelm uh, yeah. scream. <laughs> yeah, it really is. And this is yeah. the closest we get. I heard the hork Bashir's cry dying away as it fell. So the sound of him <laughs> screaming is dying, but not the hork Bashir. And then suddenly, through that open window, Seer! Tobias does his only move. He goes for the eyes. He rakes yep. the eyes of a hork That's Orc what Bajir. turns the battle. Well, that or the sound of hearing their friend yes. fall 60 stories yes. to yeah. his death. Yeah. <laughs> but it's good to know the exact height of the building. I think that <laughs> is very useful. Um, so they do it. Three of them run away. And the rest wouldn't be running anytime soon, she says. And this moment is so good because they're taking stock and they're realizing how fucked up they are. And Jake's like, you know, his D&D skills are kicking in. He's like, how about a short rest, guys? Everybody like, really demorph. Everybody yeah, really demorph. Only takes 30 minutes. Like, you know, I can get some of my spells back. Like, <laughs> this is the and moment, And Rachel's though. like, I'm good, I'm fine. And then she looks down. Because Tobias says, Rachel, your left arm. I stared blankly at my left paw. It wasn't there anymore. It was a stump. And see, this is where I'm like, if you had taken that stump, you put it in a freezer bag, you take it home. For science. (laughs) Like, we have to do this for science. Like, we need to know. What happens to the pieces of them that get cut off? Right. Like, are are the investigators going to come find their parts everywhere? (laughs) It's dinner. It's like a packed lunch. That's what I'm saying. It's like Goodberry. It's like bloody Goodberry. It's like, uh, (laughs) yeah, Cannibal's Goodberry. How horrifying would it be, though, if... Somewhere, Rachel morphs back. She has her arm back. Wherever that bear arm is, it morphs back into a eleven year old arm. Hand. <laughs> yeah, but here's here's the, that's why we know that that doesn't happen for one reason because morphing heals them. Thank yes. God. But that's that's the thing. Like if they if it didn't heal them, one would imagine that would. Happen. You just could have so and many bear arms. Insane. But like you could also morph back, and it would turn back into it. You'd just have an extra human hand that's. But not also, attached they'd be to able you. to ID these kids right away with DNA yeah. evidence. It's which the nineties. What they problematic. need to have and, happen yeah. is that it always morphs back to andalite arms. Um, confirmed. No Hork Bashir die with the human Probably. eyes. They look around. They see a scene of carnage. The hork Bajir lay sprawled around the room. Most There's, seem to be breathing. It's not confirmed no. they all were. None were a, conscious. one of them fell yes. out. Yeah. And they just don't talk about the one that fell out the window. <laughs> right. So they're like, whoa, that was I'm ga- awful. I'm going to say it, guys. They're dead. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're all dead. And uh, they see a door. And they're like, surely this was the last of the guards, right? We're fine. We're safe. They're like, let's just go through the door. And they do. And there isn't anyone in there. What there is, is it's just a plain room, plain walls. A bare room. The windows. Soon to be a bare room. There were Could lots of, of windows. Yeah. There were lots of windows in this Don't building. Don't stomp on my joke. I didn't mean to, and I'm going to cut it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> not the, no, I'm going to cut me stomping on your joke. <laughs> okay, no, you, you, um, you should leave it in now. <laughs> there's a lot of floor to ceiling windows in this building, which they did bring up a couple of times that the like the window that she pushed him through was like a floor to ceiling window. And those are covered by curtains. <laughs> and there's just like a pedestal, like three feet tall. 
eight feet long. We get some exact measurements for once in our goddamn lives. Yeah. How many football fields? But then atop that pedestal, atop that pedestal, atop that pedestal fleet of buses? was a machine the size of a small car. Mm-hmm. And I want to know, are we talking Honda Fit or are we talking smart car? <laughs> like how small? I'm guessing it's a Saturn sedan. Okay. It was shaped like a cylinder, tapered to dull points yeah. on both sides. It gleamed brightly. Which to me means pill shape. Yes. Like yes. they just mm-hmm. described a pill. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's emitting a low humming noise. Rachel says that she yes. feels her hair stand on Ed from this static electricity. It's very warm in the room and it smelled like lightning. It's probably nothing and probably just has to do with like generic space stuff. But like, didn't they have this exact same thing happen when the Andalite ship crashed? I think so. Hair standing on end, smelling yes, like ozone. someone's hair, like... Rachel's hair. Mm. Jake observes. I think all of their hair, but hers was the most yeah. dramatic. So we identify it as the Kendrona it and we all be. know what we need to do. We need to go back. We need to go back to the island, Kate. We need to go back to the circus. We need to go the whole way back, and we need our elephant morph. Right. We God damn it, we did not this bring. We did elephant. not bring a saw. <laughs> we did not. We did not bring a wrench. We brought our brawn, not our brains today. And so, Jake looks at Rachel and says, "You know what to do. Can you? Can you do it? Importantly, <laughs> Tobias." Yeah. Flies outside to make sure there's no pedestrians on the dark sidewalk below. Yeah. Uh, only that hork Which is a total empty gesture. Yeah, that, that means the, the one hork who fell and is somehow still alive is about to get squished by the Kendrona. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to land. It's going to land <laughs> okay, right yeah. atop him. Like he somehow survived and he's like, no, I he's been like I crawling. Yeah. <laughs> and the Yorks crawled out like, and got no. in the way. Yeah. And then this Kendrona just falls directly 60 stories. Again, we get an exact measurement because you can tell from how long the uh, pipe whistle goes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then splash. She whispers, we did it. She returned to her normal body. And they're like, oh, God, we got to get out of here. You know, this is a. Yeah, but Marco isn't in a rush. She's like, but what does it mean that we did it, Rachel? Tell me now and in he, this room. And he says, have we changed the future? And suddenly they hear a voice. Everything, Everything changes the changes future. The oh, future. And then Rachel groans and says, somehow I knew Werner Herzog would be back again. <laughs> a replacement <laughs> Kendrona will be here in three of your Earth weeks. <laughs> It was already on its way. So apparently Andalites and Elemists do the whole your weeks thing. Yes, but yes. Marco's really disheartened by this. He's like, does that mean does that mean this was all for nothing? And they're like, an axe specifically says, No, this is gonna this is gonna hurt them. They're gonna fall behind in schedule. Even right. if they get it back, only having it on the ship is gonna be hard for them. Many Yerks will perish. He says, three weeks is not a waste. And Marco, openly flirting yeah. this time, he says, mm-hmm. don't you mean three of our weeks, Axe? And then they nudge each other with their elbows and then they kiss. Yeah. No, yeah. sorry. And everyone else <laughs> <laughs> it didn't happen. Uh. And just didn't write it down. They just didn't write it down. <laughs> so did Jake, yeah, Jake asks, is it enough? Is it enough if we change the future? Rachel says, I don't think the Elemist knows. He showed us a possible future. But you know what? I don't believe the Elemist really knows the future any more than we do. And Jake asks, what makes you so sure? Rachel laughs, because wherever it is that the Elmist exists and whatever he's up to and whatever game he's playing, and no matter how mighty he is, he has butterflies too. Then they get overwhelmed by laughter. With laughter, yeah. So much laughter. And then they hear, ha, 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 ha. Ha. That's with a comma after every As I ha. said. <laughs> <laughs> that is the new canonical way to, to text ha yes. ha. I ha. agree, Eddie. Ha. That is the way to ha. do it. Ha. As I said, you are a primitive <laughs> species. And yet you are capable of learning. And then uh, she says, she gives some cryptic stuff. She's like, you know, at first we didn't see any evidence that we had hurt the Yerks. They maintained their front, but later, she says it wasn't, it wasn't until, until later, later we learned we had done them terrible damage. But, but that is another, another story. story. But don't take my word for it. Uh, and then we get a sweet scene of her saying goodbye to her dad. She, you know, obviously decided to stay. And so she goes over to her dad's apartment as he's packing up and she negs he's him a little. Late. Yeah. 
Yeah, and... she does. It's true. <laughs> you couldn't possibly pack yourself, you stupid idiot. <laughs> and uh, he's like, well, at least come to the airport with me. And she's like, nah, I got, I got stuff to do. And he's like, yeah, you probably have something very important to do with your friends. She's like, you motherfucker. You are alive today because of me. You look me in the eye. You look me in the eye. I saved your life. Well, but then, and then she, she like, much on that thing, she's like, you know, she's like, absolutely, I said, we have to save the world. Her dad's eyes narrowed. He turns to her. <laughs> with delight his, scum. <laughs> and delight scum. <laughs> no, no. He loves her. He says, if anyone can do it, honey, it would be you. And then he leaves in a taxi and uh, a lone hawk is circling overhead and is like, you coming, Rachel? Oh, uh, that's so funny. I thought the lone hawk was just a metaphor. <laughs> what? <laughs> I thought, I thought Did you just, just not read the last <laughs> two lines of the book? <laughs> I'm not going to lie. When I said the book ended, I actually stopped reading <laughs> many chapters. That's why I've been so quiet. You were quiet. choosing your own invention. But, uh, uh, choosing your own ending. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, yes, so Tobias says, you coming, Rachel? And then she nodded so he could see. So I think she nodded like a really big head nod and said, yes. I, was <laughs> I actually like jumped up and down. Yeah. <laughs> it was semaphore. She did. Uh, so that's two, uh, book flags. seven. It was a book crazy seven. book. Woo! It was an amazing book. And it seems to me the end of like a first big arc for the series. It's the we first time to we've drag really it out. done something. We tried to drag it out as long as possible so we'd never have to end season yeah. one of the Anadorks, but here we are at the end of season one. One thing I think we missed in this book that I think was maybe the most important thing that happened in the first seven books, Visser 3 referred to the group as the Anamorphs, which means Marco's he name. Yes! It yes. stuck. It stuck. It future, stuck. future Rachel taught them that they were the Animorphs. Yeah. And she was like, yes. no, you will call us the Animorphs. I mean, we all know that Marco is a marketing yeah. genius. He Big really sexy is. News. Org Big sexy news. The, org is going to take off. Yeah. It is. It already has. Not it, only that. It's the only news. Future I Rachel read. knows whether Marco eventually got them uniforms, too. That's true. Right. <laughs> but she's not telling. She won't tell. I'm still. She's not telling. I no. won't give up this sixth human anamorph. Yeah. Ever. I'm like, if this does not get, I'm going to die on this hill. If we read all these books and it doesn't get answered, I will go to Kay's house and I will demand the answers very I think, politely. I think, you should, I think you should tweet at her now and say, don't tell me I'm in book seven, <laughs> but my God, you better, you better, like, if you don't have this resolved by the time I read the whole series, you better have figured Wait, something so out. Do we, <laughs> who, who do you two think, that it, if it's someone we've already met, who is the sixth anamorph? I'm going to stick with Melissa Chapman. If it's someone we've already Melissa's met. Melissa's, like, mm, literally the only person it could it be. It could be Tom. Oh, true. Yeah. No. No. No, I mean the whole based on emotions alone. Yeah, I mean Juan and Terry. It's based Juan on and Terry the, as one. based yeah. on the emotions of this book. Yeah, absolutely, it couldn't be Tom. Like like these books, but in an alternate timeline, who's to say that like Tom wasn't also hanging out at the mall and decided to walk back with them? Yeah, yeah. Or I just can't think of a single thing. If Tom had never joined the sharing, he might have been at the mall that day. What if it's I? Um, who's dude? Do, you know, dude's Jake's dog, but trapped in a human yeah. dwarf. Uh, oh my God. Homer. Homer's oh, Jake's yes, dog. Dude's yeah, Tobias' yes, cat. Dude's the cat. Yeah. What if yeah. it's Deal and Dan? <gasps> oh, it's definitely Deal and Dan. Yeah. <laughs> now you guys or, are just being silly. Price Capali or the big reveal Deal and Dan and Price Capali are the same person. Yeah, there's like a fusion dance what? that happens and they. No, it's Whoa. it's it's an animorphs thing the whole oh. time. He's always been more. It's a <laughs> <laughs> He survived so he could become Deal and yeah. Dan. <laughs> he wanted to what retire in peace. What's your what's your verb in the book? Verb of the book. Slither jumps or out now, to or me. What is it? Um, oh no, good. it is. It's not a verb. It's tumble down. Tumble, tumble down. down. It's tumble, tumble down's down. the word of the book. Tumble down's the word of the book. Ha ha ha! With a comma after. <laughs> That's a phrase. That's True. the phrase, phrase of the, the book. book. So, this is the last book in our first series of books. Yeah, and that's how the Animorphs ended. 
will be back reading Animorphs. Uh, we're going to start a, <laughs> a new, one. similarly named series, series that weirdly but starts very seriously at everybody. book eight. Yeah, <laughs> no book, book, <laughs> the very, book between book seven and book eight, which is book zero, book seven point five. Megamorphs. <laughs> What's it called? Megamorphs. <laughs> God what? damn it! What? Morgan Megamorphs. Or what? does it have a subtitle? Yeah. <laughs> but very seriously. Thank as we're gonna the we're gonna do one more gift. I'm sorry, non- it's Megamorphs one, the Andalite's yeah. gift. Go ahead. We're gonna right. do one more non mini sode mini sode that is going to be a big analysis end of season set piece. Um there will be music. There will be You promise there will be <laughs> Yeah, there will be snacks. I'm gonna eat okay. snacks and I Are you gonna bring day. snacks? To share. Not to share. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, hey, this isn't the sharing. Mm-hmm. This is uh, this is something else entirely. Point is, thank you for sticking it out with us. And we're going to do Megamorphs next. We're probably... Uh, we'll, maybe we'll start streaming. Uh, maybe we'll play the Animorphs board game. Who knows? We will find out. Yeah, we're going to do some. And we have a lot of ideas. And we're very please, excited to share them with you. Please tell your friends... Please five star review us and every other podcast you listen to. It helps everybody Mm -hmm. so much. Five star um, and leave a review. Yeah. Yeah. Because we have to read the reviews out loud in our underwear (laughs) while reciting the Pledge of Allegiance in sign language. This is just your dream again. Yeah. Oh, you're right. Damn it. (laughs) I have that dream twice. Okay. Thanks for listening to Anadorks. We'll be back soon with lots more to say. Until the Andalites return, or at least until next time. See you soon.